Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to project 16 of 25 beginner JavaScript projects. In this application, we're going to show you how to create this image generator using the Unsplash API. You could even double click an image and then right click to save it directly to your computer. I created a website dedicated to the projects that we're going to be building in this series. You can find it at jsprospect.com. I also talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to become a web developer. And you can even access the tutorials directly from here. So if you wanted to watch this one, just click it and you can watch the tutorial here. If you want to learn more about these projects, you can click here. And I wrote a small article that talks about each project. You could even test the project out before you build it. So let's say that you wanted to test this one out. You can click here and you can test out the project. If you want to learn how to host your applications the way I did here, I wrote an article that shows you how to do it. So just click on this link and it's going to take you to this article, host your website for free with GitHub pages. And here I show you the steps that you need to take to host your application on GitHub pages. There's only four steps, so it's actually very simple to do. All right, guys, before we start, I want you to go to unsplash.com slash developers and create an account. They're going to give you an API key. You're going to need that key for this project. And once you do that, I want you to search for font awesome CDN. You're going to click on the link by cdnjs.com. And you're going to copy this first URL. Let's paste that up here. All right, so we now have access to Font Awesome. All right, now we're going to start in the body. Let's create a header element tag. Now let's create a container within this header. Let's give it a class name of container. And let's create another container within this container. We're going to give this one a class name of nav. So remember, our project is going to have like this nav bar at the top. Well, it's not really a nav bar, but it looks like one. So that's why we're going to give it a class name of nav. All right, let's give it a title. We're going to call it Unsplash API Demo. And right in front of it, we're going to add an image. So we're going to go to Font Awesome and search for an icon. All right, let's click on the icons link. And let's search for a camera. I'm going to go with this first option. Let's click the HTML and we're going to paste it right in the front here. Let's change the color. I'm going to go with orange. All right. And right underneath this, we're going to create another pair of div tags and we're going to give this a class name of search box. This is where our input box is going to go. All right, let's create an input box. We can get rid of the name. Let's give this an ID of input. And let's also give it a placeholder. It's going to say search with three little dots. Let's also add an icon inside of this input box. So let's go search for one. We're going to search for search. Let's go with this first one, copy the HTML, and let's place it right in the front. All right, so when the user clicks on this, we want to search for images. So let's use an onClick, and let's give it a class name of load IMG. Let's get rid of these spaces. And underneath this header, we're going to create another div element. Let's give it a class name of container. This is where our images are going to go. So let's create another pair of div tags and let's give this a class name of grid. All right, that's going to be it for the HTML. All right, let's start off by removing the default padding and margin. 
So let's access all of the elements with the asterisk and set padding to zero and margin to zero. All right, now we're going to change the font family, but I don't want to use any of the built-in fonts. So we're going to search for the Google Font API. Let's click on the second link. Select the font that you want to use. I'm going to search for one called Comforta. Click select this style, import, and copy the contents within the style element. We're going to paste that up here. All right, and to actually use the font, we also have to copy this piece here. All right, let's change the background color. I'm gonna go with black and the color of the font as well. I'm gonna go with white for that. For the header element, let's add a border bottom of five pixels, solid orange. For the container, we're gonna change the width to 95%. And we're going to place it in the center with margin auto. For the nav class, we're going to turn it into a flex box. Let's use the option of justify content, space between, and also flex wrap wrap. This is going to make it responsive when we resize the window. Let's also give it a padding of 25 pixels on the top and the bottom. Let's change the font size of our title to 2 rem. For the search box, we're going to use a position of relative. And that's because we want to use a position of absolute on this icon here. All right, we're going to change the width to 350 pixels. For the input box, we're going to use box sizing border box. We're going to change the width to 100%. Let's also change the font size to one rem and let's give this a padding of eight pixels let's also give it round edges with border radius let's go with 25 pixels and let's remove the outline and we're also going to add an animation so when you click on this there's the outline around the input box so let me add the animation that I had for the original project. And I just literally hate writing these down. That's why I just copied and pasted. But this is basically gonna account for all of the browsers. And let's also add a border of one pixel solid light gray. All right, so when we click on it, we're gonna give it a outline effect so let's add a box shadow and I'm gonna go with zero zero five pixels orange I'm also gonna add a border so it could make the effect a little bit better now when we click on it there's an effect of a highlight effect but it's really just a box shadow All right, let's place this icon inside of the input box. First, let's change the color to black. Let's give it a position of absolute. And we want it to come off the top by 25% and off the right by 4%. We're also gonna give it a transition of 1.5 second. That's because when we hover it, we want it to turn a different color but we don't want it to happen automatically. 
so that's why we're going to add a transition of 1.5 seconds all right so when you hover it we want to change the color to orange all right for the grid class this is the one that's going to hold all of the images we're going to change the width to 100 percent we're going to turn it into a flex box to make it responsive let's use flex wrap wrap justify content space evenly and align items flex start For the actual images, we have to add some dimensions to them as well. If not, they're just going to be the they're going to be big sizes. So let's change the width to 380 pixels. So when they display on the screen, they're a nice size. Let's change the height to 200, and we don't want them so close to the top. So we're going to change this to 15 pixels, and we want them right in the center so we're going to use background position of 50 percent 50 percent and we're also going to use a background size of cover and let's also give them round edges not too much just two pixels and that's going to be it for the features that we're going to add now we just have to add some media queries to make sure that this looks good on the phone so we're going to go over to responsive design testing let's copy and paste the url and i think it looks pretty good at 768 and higher but at 480 i want to place it in the center and i want to make the font a little bit smaller so let's add some changes to make sure that it looks good on the phone as well all right we're going to start by adding a media query for max width of 768 pixels at this point you can't see this particular change but we're going to change the width of the image to 100 percent so it could fill up the the screen and for the nav bar we're going to use justify content center all right so that's going to place the this in the center I think it looks better than having it over here on the left and let's also give it some padding notice that this is too close together so let's give it a padding on the top and the bottom of five pixels let's add another media query this is going to get activated at 480 pixels all right, at this point, we want to change to text align center. And we also want to change the font size to 1.5 RAM. We're currently at 2 RAM, so we're just going to bring it down by 0.5. And let's change the width of the search box container to 80%. And let's give it a margin of auto to place it in the center. Let's also change the font size of the input box. I'm going to go with 0.7 rem. All right, let's look at it again to see what it looks like now. And that looks pretty good to me. So we're going to go ahead and go with that. All right, that's going to be it for the CSS. Let's start by getting access to this input box and also to the container that's going to hold the images. We're going to access the input box by using get element by ID and we gave it a name of input. For the container, we're going to access it by using get elements by class name and we gave that a class name of grid. All right, now let's add an event listener so the user can click on the enter key. This is going to be activated on key down. Let's add 
function event. And in here, we're going to create an if statement that checks if the user clicked on the enter key. If they did, then we're going to call on a function called load img that's going to load the images onto the screen. Let's prepare that function here. And before we create it, we're going to create another function that checks if it's day or night. If it's day, then we're going to use a day theme. And if it's night, then we're going to keep this dark theme. Let's call it day night mode. All right, we have to start by getting the date. We do that by using the date class. And once we have the date, we can get the hour by using the get hours built in function. All right, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create an if statement that checks if it's between 7 in the morning and 7 p.m. So if hour is greater than or equal to 7 in the morning and hour is less than or equal to 19 because this hour is being returned in military time, then we want to use the day theme. So let's access the body and we're going to change the background color. In this case, it's the day. So we're going to change the background color to white smoke. And let's also get access to the color. In that case, we're going to change it to black. Otherwise, we're going to use the dark theme. So let's just copy this. And we're going to change this to black. And we're going to change this to white. And we're going to make a function call to this as soon as you run this project. That way that function can get called. So let's use window add event listener, load, and we're going to include the name of the function. And currently it's 3.57 p.m. so it's going to use the day theme. All right, before we create this load img function, we're going to create another function that's going to remove the images from the screen. And we're going to call that one remove images. And this one's very simple. We're just going to get access to the grid variable and we're going to set the inner HTML to an empty string. All right, now let's create this function. We're going to start by calling on the remove images function because every time that we make a new request, we want to delete the old images from the screen. So that's why we're going to call on this function first. Now we have to create the URL that we're going to make a request to. If you want to know more about this, then go over to the Unsplash API documentation to find out more. I just happen to know that to make a request, you're going to go to HTTPS API on splash.com search photos question mark query equals and in here we're going to add two plus symbols input value. So we're going to get the input from the user. And we also have to include an per page. I want to receive nine images, so I'm going to add a nine. You can request more if you want. And client ID equals, this is where you're going to paste your API key that you got when you created your Unsplash API account. I'm going to copy the one that I have for my original project because it's quite long and I'm actually not supposed to share it with anybody, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it before I post this project on YouTube. So yeah, so I'm just going to post it for teaching purposes. All right, there's my API key. Now we're going to make a request to this URL using fetch. And we're going to use a promise to make the request. 
let me output what this returns just so you can see what this is doing so I'm gonna output the response all right let's search for something let me just say watermelon click enter right click inspect console and this is the response let's click it and it returned a lot of information but we're interested in this here in this okay of true so we're gonna use that for our promise here let me show you how we're gonna use it so let's create an if statement it's gonna check if the response is true if it is then we're gonna move on to our other promise and we're gonna send over the data that we got from this request otherwise we're gonna do a console log we should really do an alert here let's do an alert so we're gonna display a message that's gonna tell us why this was unsuccessful so with status it's gonna return whether it's like 400 404 so this is gonna tell us why our request was unsuccessful All right, let's create another promise. This one is gonna return the data. So at this point, we can do whatever we want with the data. In our case, we wanna display it on the screen. First, we wanna retrieve it and place it in an array. We're gonna call it image nodes. First, we have to create it, of course. And now we're gonna use a for loop to go through the data. And we're gonna place each of the images in its own div element. So for this for loop, we're gonna set i to zero. If i is less than data results dot length, so if it's less than the array that we are receiving, then we wanna keep looping this for loop. All right, let's access the first index of the array. And we're actually gonna use this again, so we're gonna copy this three times. But for this first round here, we're gonna use document create element and this is going to be a div element and we're going to give each one of these div elements a class name of IMG and remember this image class is the one that's going to hold the images and that's the same class that we changed the width and height for here in the CSS the only feature that we can't add with CSS is what image we're going to use on this class and that's because we just got the images now so we have to make that change here so let's use background image and we're going to set this equal to url let's add two more quotes in here two plus symbols and in the center we're going to use data results the first image urls dot raw all right we have the first image inside of our div element now let's add an event listener so when you double click on it it opens up the image in another page and you're able to download it straight to your computer so we're going to add an event listener this is going to be activated on double click And then here we're going to type window open data results this particular image links download and we want to open up this page in a different web page so we're going to use underscore blank and the last thing that we want to do here is add this particular Div element onto our grid so let's use grid append child image nodes in this particular index all right that's gonna be it let's test this out let's search for watermelon let's click enter and here are the watermelons but my internet is a little bit slow all right let's check to see how responsive this is so let's resize this and it looks pretty responsive to me. 
All right, now let's double click an image. It's gonna open up in another page. Let's right click, save image as, go ahead and give it a name. Click save. And now it saved it straight to your computer. All right, that's gonna be it for this project. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next one.